welcome to Space with Sarah. I often get the slightly dramatic question, when will the world end? This question can mean several different things, but my favorite interpretation of it is, will life here on Earth end? I really like answering this question because sometimes it freaks people out a little. The answer is definitely yes. Whether or not humans will be here to see it is a whole different story. One definition of our world ending can be determined by the definite lifetime of stars like the sun. They don't shine forever, and the sun is pretty crucial for life here on Earth. The sun is a star just like all the other shiny objects we see in the sky, except for planets and galaxies. Our own star, the sun, is just a lot closer to us than any of the other stars. The distance from us to the next nearest star is 271,000 times the distance from us to the sun. The lifetime of a star depends crucially on its mass. Stars are basically balls of gas fighting an inward collapse with pressure in the opposite direction. On the surface of a star, there needs to be hydrostatic equilibrium, which means the force inward from gravity trying to make the star implode has to be balanced perfectly by the pressure outwards. This outward pressure comes from both particles moving around in the giant gas ball, but also from the ongoing fusion within the stellar core. The more massive the star is, the more efficiently fusion needs to happen in its core to balance the force of gravity pushing inward. Stars consist mostly of hydrogen, which was already present in huge amounts right after the Big Bang. Our sun is currently fusing hydrogen into helium within its core, and it'll do so for the majority of its lifetime. If you want to know more about fusion, look out for a future video. Eventually, the sun will run out of hydrogen in its core, and it'll start to contract due to the lack of fusion. This will heat up a layer surrounding the core, and hydrogen will start to fuse in a shell. In this process, the outer layer of the sun will expand by 100 times in size, and form what we call a red giant star. When the density and pressure is high enough in the core, all the helium that has been produced can start to fuse into carbon. This happens at a temperature of 100 million degrees. However, in a star like our sun, there will never be extreme enough conditions for carbon to start to fuse. When its core eventually runs out of helium, it'll start collapsing to a white dwarf, while the outer layers of the sun will oscillate and be slowly expelled into what we call a planetary nebula. This means the sun will eventually turn off and everything but the white dwarf will mix into space. The sun and our whole solar system is currently 4.6 billion years old, compared to the universe, which is 13.8 billion years old. We know the age of our solar system, not from studying the sun, but from studying the radioactive decay in minerals, rocks, and the oldest meteorites that we've found on Earth. Simultaneously, by studying and modeling various solar mass stars at different evolutionary stages, we know that stars like the sun live for roughly 10 billion years. So yes, the world, our world, will end in roughly 5 billion years. It might be unlikely that we humans are around to see it, which is a whole other discussion. I mean, who knows when we'll go extinct. Thanks for watching Space with Sarah. If you're still curious about the universe, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep wondering.